Uh, I would love to start this one off with just a brief meditation and for us to drop into our breath and connect with our heart and dive into really our deepest, most beautiful self, which is both of us, and find what most needs to be said in this beautiful conversation and to the, really the community who we're both talking to right now. And this is an introduction to, so this is also an intro to anyone watching um, to just take a moment and connect with the breath and connect with our hearts and... Yeah, find that beautiful, calm, lovely space to drop into. I'd love to keep going, but I also, <laughs> I also feel like really excited. We have so much to cover today. Uh, we've been talking about this for forever and you were going to host. So I'm going to pass it back over to you to do so. Okie dokie. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Natalie Woodhouse. I am a facilitator in the Collaboratory DAO. And I am helping to stabilize the nucleus so that we have a beautiful fluid structure to support and to continue bringing in new community members as we grow and evolve. Um, in this seeds ecosystem. So we are gathered- Can I do a quick history for those who don't know about the Collaboratory DAO, or do you want to give a brief history? Oh, actually it would, yeah. That was one of my questions for you today, Reiki. Uh, I'd like us to track time. So if we do a question from the past, enter into the now, receiving abundance of what's showing up right now, and then you know what this circle is evolving into. So yes, where have you been? Both with the Collaboratory DAO and with healing and gratitude. Uh, can you say it again? Where have you been? Where have I been? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um... I'm wrestling in my mind because part of me just wants to go into, you know, talking a brief history of how we got to where we're at as a community and the other half, you know, let's start with that. So um, at least the collaboratory DAO, where that sprung from was there's a couple attempts after Seeds community kind of fired Haifa. <laughs> I mean, not fired. That's a terrible term. That's not what happened. They just voted down a proposal, which some people took that as being fired. And there was like, there was a lot of um, un unintended consequences from that move that wasn't expected from a lot of players and that created a lot of conflict that hasn't actually been addressed in the last couple of years since that mode. Um, so I think that's one of the big points in our movement and our community is when we come to these spaces when other organizations have come into seeds to be a part of it and there was some type of tension and conflict between existing members and new members and then it was just never dealt with. So that's a big you know, impetus for the healing and gratitude circles. But anyway, when that initial move with Haifa started, the Seeds community has had a couple uptakes to try to create a new like alternative to Haifa, something to organize Seeds. So Haifa was playing that role, but it was too much. You know, that was like, you can think of it in terms of a human, right? When a human is in the uh, womb before it's born, it doesn't just have one organ ready before it decides it's ready to enter the world. You know, the heart gets ready before a lot of other organs are ready, right? The heart's already beating very early on. 
it's not like the heart is ready and it's like minimum viable project, let's just launch. Because the heart can't do everything. So it's the same thing with Haifa. Haifa couldn't build the tools and hold the space for the community and tell the story and et cetera, everything that needs to happen. Yeah, Haifa so has a very clear formed. purpose. Yeah. Yeah, it's they're very professional. They're very like focus driven. And that's um, a good thing. We need that. The relationship between Haifa and Seeds reminds me of when I was a teenager with my mother and I were even younger, a toddler. And I was like, let me do it. I want to do it. And then it was like, push Haifa, push my mom away. You know, it's kind of like that. So the there's still a need for the relationship, but the dynamic of it is still evolving. Uh, that's a beautiful that way of looking at it. And similarly, it's a similar challenge, at least I'm aware, is the teenagers get rebellious against the parents only if the parents were kind of acting patriarchal to begin with. Right. And then, so, well, yeah. And then so they're I like, you're that's... living in my house, so you're going to follow my rules. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, so that was definitely needed for that separation. So I think that was very healthy for the ecosystem. And that's where a lot of the other organs that were necessary needed to form. So we have do tell, we have regen civics that's out there actually doing experiments on the ground, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the collaboratory is the second um, time trying to start an alternative because the seeds commons also got set up for this purpose. They tried, but they didn't necessarily find consensus and they didn't, they didn't get it across the line. Uh, so that one kind of dissolved and a new attempt, which is the seeds collaboratory, which is a awesome i mean it's taken all the learnings of the last six years i really think it's implementing them well um so i really see the seeds collaboratory as being that foundation that was necessary and we have the other organs so we have do tell out there telling the story doing this newsletter um anyway i don't want to get too deep into that so passing it back and, to you well yeah. yeah sure one of the 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 challenges that we're noticing is that the the DAO is a very specific tool with a very specific purpose. Um, and this one's questing into the, the regenerative finance. Um, and it's like taking that complex like DAO or even simple DAO package, but putting a cl complex, diverse community around it. And the, those two, that's where we are right now is we're in the process of turning the compost. We're like, what pieces, you know, what resources do we have? What, like, you know, <laughs> what still needs digesting? Um, and, you know, how can we establish really beautiful soil structure so that it's, you know, we can put it into the gardens, we can um, mm. nourish the seeds that have been like we've, there's been some um, seed saving and seed collecting. And yeah, there's, there will be a time where it'll um, be ready to, you know, add the compost and the water. So nature, in my sense of what I've learned coming in with like from a, the outside edge, kind of wandering into the middle of this Tao, I've noticed that like nature has asked this whole process to really slow down. And that's mm. difficult for a, a culture that is product driven, that is like, let's achieve, you know, especially when the world around us seems like it's falling apart. There's like this yearning to like, please give me something like a mast of the, like a ship to cling to because everything's falling apart. But, um, <laughs> that's one of the attractive pieces for me about seeds was that there was a collection of people that were interested and excited and focused on finding a new way to to bridge the worlds the old paradigm and the potential for something regenerative Mm. And it was really hope giving for me to f to know that I didn't have to do it all on my own, even if 
the way wasn't clear. This has been part of the teaching is being a facilitator every week. I have to get more and more comfortable being okay with the unknown and still showing up. Yes. <laughs> so let's bring it all the way now in terms of healing and gratitude. If you were to use like an I am statement, where were you? So I, for me, I am a collab facilitator. I am a co-lead in the stewardship and governance council. Um, I am a contributor. I am a healer. I am an artist. Uh, I am a permaculturist and I am a water baby. Mm. <laughs> I'll pass it on to you. I love those labels. Um, you're also none of those labels. You're also an infinite being. And I am a microorganism living on and in Gaia, a uh, conscious being who's becoming more and more, that's weird to say Earth's becoming more aware of herself. I, I know people say that, but it's more like we're, we're becoming more aware of how Earth is aware of itself already. You know, <laughs> So maybe humans are becoming more aware. Anyway, um, we're part of that process of realizing we're this infinite being. So I'm being part of that. Some other labels I hold right now and I'm really focused on is fatherhood and that transition. Mm. And holy, like, I, no wonder our world is in such crises. Like I am, I'm a white male. I'm part of the blessed class of this world, definitely. And my wife and I have one baby, no full-time jobs. i Everything I do is for seeds, and that's the only time I spend online or working. And fatherhood is so challenging. Like, there's so many traumas that come up in it, and it is uh, 80 hours a week job to focus on mm. just dealing with the wounds that are coming up through this process, trying to be there for him, being there for my wife. Like, man, it is a full time. So, I can't even imagine having to have a full time job or doing anything else other than this and keeping my sanity. And I, I'm, I'm freaking privileged. So either I'm just completely incapable as a human, which I don't know if that's the case, or no wonder society is so in such a challenging place. So when I Can think I about ask? like the now and the healing to weave this all together, please actually ask your and say something beautiful. I was going to ask, do you have a community surrounding you besides like the online Right. So that's probably the biggest case. And it's also my driver with seeds to be completely clear is community because we don't have that tribe because who we would trust our son with. We're so aware of so many things that it makes it challenging. Mm -hmm. So we are very particular with the culture we would like him to be raised in and amongst. And that doesn't exist for us yet. So that's mm -hmm. been really our drive is when we're about to have a baby and there was a miscarriage because we didn't want to bring a baby into this world. And we just felt so much guilt that it ended up causing miscarriage. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of what kicked off this whole journey for us is how do we turn the story? How do we create a world actually worth bringing humans into? And here's where the beautiful part is, is my son. <laughs> you know, I thought we had to do that first. I was in this hubris, this arrogance that, you know, it is my role as a father to create that entire world for him and then birth him in the garden of Eden, you know, <laughs> create a perfect world and then, you know, birth him there. Um, he brought, came to me in one of my dreams. And the first one was him being kind of the boss and me listening to him. And I was like, okay, I get the message. Never mind. You're, you know what to do and I will like serve you in it, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Um, and very soon after that dream, he, we were pregnant. We didn't count on being pregnant. We didn't intentionally do it, which is sad because that's how we wanted to do it. But anyway, uh, the next dream he showed up and he's like, actually, I want to be part of this game. Like you're at a really awesome time in humanity. This is awesome. Like you're transitioning from civilization. This is a juicy, beautiful, epic time to be alive. Like I want to be here right now. I want to be here with you doing this. And I was like, oh my God, like I was being selfish thinking I was going to do all of this. This is like a game. You know, these souls are looking at it as a game to come here at this time. It's like playing on super expert mode. Like 
you know, AI is coming out, the whole world's collapsing, like forest fires everywhere, like all of the crises are on like expert mode. Like this is the time that like the souls that like really want to challenge are coming here to play. And those kids are like <laughs> the ones. So that's kind yeah. of the point of the healing circles to start with is like, how do we create? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's just hold space for a second for that whole journey you just spoke to. Like that's that's a huge experience. And so I just want to say thank you for sharing it and being open and vulnerable and trusting me and the community with this story, you know, and I offer gratitude to you and the little being that showed up in your life. <laughs> and I honestly believe that they sh show up with the tools needed, like the biology required to navigate the, the, the stuff that we're facing in our world today. So that, that's to me sounds like a lot of where your motivation and intention has come from um the family connection and the protection and the legacy of that yeah well i mean family as far as all the other non-human species and gaia and you and you know all the other human i mean family is so extensive that that's kind of the whole drive is you know we yeah yeah. macro micro right like it's it's true you as you heal yourself you heal the world as you heal the world you heal yourself there's so let me come at you with there was one other question of like where does this circle evolve into and maybe that's the prompt for um your slides if you'd like to take it there but if we imagine and operate this healing gratitude circle that you've proposed as if everyone is already healed by their own source healing connection, then what is the circle's intention? Is it talking, sharing, um, yes. listening? I love this. Witnessing. Um. <laughs> And this is a this is a good time to bring it to the slides. But <laughs> before I get into what these circles are, which nobody knows, um, we've talked about it a lot, you and I, so you already know. But okay, we'll jump to the intention. What comes after the circle? So why even join them to begin with? It's to one, we'll heal, go on a healing journey. And part of that is witnessing each other and learning from that. So one of the reasons you might attend is to learn about how other people are healing, which gives you ideas and be like, oh, actually, that might work for me. <laughs> You know, so it's a place to come and, you know, share together and learn together the different pathways towards healing and heal together, witness that. So that's fun. Uh, the other main thing is to find our tribes. So other people who will connect with, be like, yes, I really resonate with this other human, right? And then once we find a critical mass of people we resonate with, I don't know what that number is. Let's just give it a number, 144. And say, once there's 144 of you that are just resonating, dude, I'd be like, yep, we're a great tribe. That's when you might come in and say, all right, well, we'll launch a minimum viable economy somewhere. You know, maybe we'll go and, you know, take over this resort and buy a resort, or maybe we'll buy a, you know, one of these failing towns in Europe or whatever. You can go and set up a place and then actually design a new reality. Because I think with 144 people all meeting each other's needs, you can create kind of whatever reality you guys want to create. You know, and I think that's kind of where we get to go with this is we get to redesign reality around what's going to best serve us, help us transition in this time of change, um, help us thrive. And, you know, what's really a lie for me is to give my son a community he can run around in. Like he is so adventurous. He is like already we have a huge place here. It's great. But he's already like in the neighbor's house all the time. And the neighbors are a little bit weird. <laughs> I love them. They're awesome. I love my neighbors. But um they're just not the same like I, I can't you know count on them not giving them something poisonous without realizing that you know what they're eating is poison you know <laughs> so and that's just you know part of the world we're living in right now um so yeah that's kind of where I think this goes is this goes to help us find our tribe heal together and 
redesign reality with all these tools that we've built. So the tools are really here to help us design new types of economic systems. And our economic systems are kind of de facto our realities because it's how we, you know, spend most of our time is being driven or living within the world that our economic systems are designing. You know, we think of how much time we're spending staring at technology or engaging with technology or even engaging with stuff that was only built in the last hundred years. If you just calculate mm -hmm. the percentage of our time mm -hmm. that we're spending just engaging with stuff that's only a century old, it's an enormous amount. So it's an entirely new paradigm that our biology just hasn't adjusted to yet. <laughs> Um, but that also means yeah. we're super, you know, plastic and we could adjust to anything, which means the landscape for what realities we can create is pretty infinite, which is what excites me. Yes. So it sounds to me like the intentionality is 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 broad at this point. And I'm quite aware that online the um the space, the energy for healing can be quite different, a different kind of management. And my recommendation would be to uh, start small, to create a place of trust, kind of like a sharing hub, gathering that tribe, and then also gathering additional resources for, because when the word healing comes up for me, there's quite a few requirements that are um, necessary for it to be a safe space, to be like consistency, for instance, is important for my nervous system. Or, you know, a lot of our strung out fight or flight, um, stress induced nervous systems to um, not have certain pieces of that are reliable or or you know shared agreements, um, then it can be it can make for a lot of uncertainty, uh, a lot of liabilities even. Because um, I've been asking that question: What do I need, you know, as a facilitator from? the seeds ecosystem what kind of clarity or boundaries what kind of like reciprocal reflection do i need and yeah a strong container is part of that a facilitator who's willing to hold that energy if there's like a ritual or intent or ceremony particularly um, there needs to be a really clear set intention and topic of like, what's this circle about? Are we healing sexual trauma and abuse, shame around money? Or are we just like witnessing and talking casually? And then someone who does have like a significant concern, a uh, mental issue or, uh, you know, something that is happening that they, if that's out of balance and they can't control is there someone confidential that they can speak to? You know, mm -hmm. that the healing carries um, deep roots and ripples. And there needs to be someone who can read the container or read the energy and, um, yeah, help resolve those that need help because it's true. I've been witnessing it as well, that in the community, um, you know, there's anonymous strangers that show up in Discord and they express a lot of fury and anger. They're like, you know, I demand or like, what's up? Pay attention to me. How come you guys aren't doing anything? I'm not going to do the work myself. I'm just going to yell at everybody else to get it done. And then there's, you know, people who who want to be there and contribute, but they're conflicted or they're having a interpersonal issue. And um, there's nowhere yet clear enough and strong enough to take these energies. It was 
Yoast, who introduced me to the operational, structural, and heartbeat. And if you don't clarify or create a space for that heartbeat, it will usurp everything else. It will just throw the wrench right into the system. And whether you want it to or not, things will become unplugged. So what you're doing here is the right idea. And that's a, that's perfect because actually for this whole time in Seeds and Hypho, we've had the operational and the governance or the tactical and the governance circles. Yes, very governance strong. Governance being yeah. like, how do we decide? How do we decide and stuff? Tactical being like doing shit and getting stuff done. You know, the heartbeat, we kept trying to start those, but it was a bunch of false starts. Like it didn't actually stick. So I don't know if it wasn't right for it or whatever. It doesn't matter. We can't change history. Point is, it's definitely what the intention behind this new setup is. Uh, a couple things to lead in before I present. I love everything yes. you're bringing um, and it's very mm -hmm. valid. And there's no one right way to do this. So behind the healing circles is the gratitude DAO. So anyone who's a healer and wants to offer modalities, I mean, part of this could earn tokens in that DAO, but then also be uh, holding spaces. So there's a lot, there's going, hopefully there's going to be a lot more than just, because I'm going to start off being one of the space holders, but multiple people can, and hopefully it launches with multiple people choosing to be space holders. Um, but this is the introduction to the Gratitude DAO, so no one's heard of it until just now. Um, so, um, no one's joined yeah. it yet. Um, so that's that's kind of step one, is there's going to be a lot of different ways we're holding containers. Having that consistency is you know definitely key, but then what does it look like is going to be very different depending on who's holding the space and what they're offering. And that's kind of the idea is we need that diversity and it needs to be very open and flexible that way. Um, and then let me let me just dive in actually to the presentation now. And I think that will answer some more. And then we'll go back to dialogue because I was loving that. Um, so let's just take it back. And this is kind of the point again. We'll start off, you know, we talk about regeneration and what the world needs right now. And fundamentally, that is healing. When we're regenerating, we're healing. When we're regenerating the earth, we're healing ourselves, we're healing, you know. And native cultures all over and wise keepers of wisdom and all these people have always been saying this, you know. But anyway, so regeneration is actually healing all our relations. And that's what this, you know, renaissance is really about understanding is that we are the trees, we are the grass, we are the mountains, we are the rivers, we are all the animals. So it's about healing our relationship with ourselves through all of these other things that we are. So, you know, all our relations means reconnecting with, we'll get into all of that. So let's keep going. Self, you know, regeneration is healing the self. We kind of get this, you know, eating healthier, being more mindful, et cetera. We're all kind of on this journey. A lot of people, especially if you're watching this video on positive, you are, you know, you get this. Regeneration is healing the self, but self is we are everything which then gets into the next level we're healing. And this is also what we're coming to talk to in the circles is you can speak to any one of these things we're going through the process of healing. You know, we're all healing simultaneously all these different areas, but at different times in our life, we may be more focused on one of these categories of healing. And if that's where you're at, perfect. That's part of the Renaissance too. Everyone's welcome to come and talk about that healing journey you are, you're going on with yourself or with your family, family, you know, blood and otherwise, and you're, you're, what I also consider family on each one of these levels, family includes the kin's domain. So that's the, the land that you're dwelling, your house sits on. I would consider that your family as well. So this <laughs> might be your garden and your you know, animals and everything else that you're living and sharing earth with. And then the next scale yeah. would then be your bioregion. So that's what we're kind of coordinating within seeds is this idea that you are your bioregion, you know, like how do we make our rivers drinkable again? How do we, you know, change weather and make it rain again? Like you can do that on a bioregional scale. You can literally change weather patterns such as rain if you're healing on a bioregional scale. So that's the next order of coordination within seeds and how we're looking at it is what is your bioregion? You know, who's the community and your tribe in your bioregion? How are you connecting? How are you making your rivers drinkable again? You know, how are you building habitat to bring back the beavers and the bears and the wolves and, or, you know, lions or zebras and whatever else, whatever you know, climate you're in, right? Um, so that's the other level of healing is how are we healing our bioregions? Again, that's connecting with the human and otherwise. 
And I really want to emphasize that we have our other family here to help us heal this planet. It is so ignorant of humans to think that we're in this climate crisis on our own. When we're, we're stupid in a lot of ways, you know, the beavers know how to do better water management than us. But we are way better off just bringing beavers back to the land and letting them take over than, you know, keep building more dams and trying to figure it out ourselves. Um, so anyway, healing our bioregions and what does that process look like? And then, of course, the last one is Gaia as a whole system, Earth. And this is our global tribe, and this is what we're doing here. You know, we're connecting globally to heal together, to coordinate together, to learn as a tribe. So this is where we're doing this healing right here, right now, is the Gaia level, right? So when we come to these healing circles, we're looking at all of this, you know. Um, so what am I inviting us all into is a multiplayer healing journey, right? Um, because we kind of have to do it multiplayer because it's kind of the point. Um, as Gabor Mate and other informed healers say, you know, health is a bio, which self, psycho, your mental state, social, who you're connecting with, you know, Gaian, which is what they all say, but they don't have the, they didn't put it in there. So I put it in there, <laughs> you know, process. Uh, because we have to heal all of those things simultaneously. And as we do, they all feed back into each other, right? You know, as you yes. know, if your family's unwell, you're unwell. You know, if you're if the bioregion is unwell, if your water's poisoned, your air is poisoned, then you're unwell, you know, all of those things. Can, connect. can I jump in for a sec? Please. The, the biopsychosocial, so I also hear like body, mind, interpersonal, and then yes, the, the global component. And part of my journey that led me to SEEDS was this discovery um, through the Universal Foundation of Holistic Design they host a reenculturation where they focus first on establishing awareness within the personal realm and then the interpersonal. And those two require a certain level of like foundation and stability before global can really operate um, and function holistically or even successfully. Does that make sense? So yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll even I'll compare it to lots of natural processes. Again, a baby in a womb. What's happening is all the organs are coming online slowly, the cells. And if we extrapolate this and look at humans as cells, we're finding each other in communities. You can look at those as organs. And then as those organs come online, they start being operating themselves. And that organ could be a whole system completely thriving on its own before the baby's even birth, right? And that's kind of yeah. what we're looking at right now is like we're coming together and forming these communities, we're forming bioregions, we're setting it up locally before the global, you know, transition takes place. But that is the global transition. That's us kind of, you know, building the, the new world, if you will. Eliza Harold has a beautiful way of yeah, tracing the the some of the origins of water in us. And she talks about those pacer cells in the in the very beginning forming of the embryo and they're attracted to each other and it's in their joining they begin to like collect and it's when they come together they start forming this vibrational frequency and this vibrational like pulse that ends up um i think it's almost like calling the the whole life form into being it's a mm -hmm. pretty fascinating process um, mm -hmm. It's the same with water. It's it has its covalent bonds. It's a it's it's water is only water when it's the 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 molecules are have come together. Otherwise, like one molecule of water is it will disperse into the hydrogen and oxygen. But it's when it's come together, that's when it begins to form raindrops to oceans, right? The humans, I mean, we're mostly water, right? Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Yeah, uh, we have four minutes left in this. So I'm going to try to wrap this up and then we can hop on another one. So we'll have a part two if you want to finish this up, but I'm going to try to finish up the presentation in that four minutes and then we'll have more dialogue. Anyway, um, here's the real heartbeat of this for me. Uh, and what I would hold for is meetings as medicine. Like, why are we actually coming together? Why are we taking this 90 minutes out of our days to meet online? Like, it's to heal. Like, the meeting itself needs to be medicine. And in order for that to be the case, like, we all need to show up for it. 
And if it's not coming alive for you, if you're not being invigorated by it, or if it's not serving you, then part of your healing yourself is to speak up. You know, <laughs> like, how are we going to, how are we ever going to do decentralized governance for new economies and financial systems if we don't speak? And if we can't speak our truths. And so many of us have been, you know, encultured by the last civilization to shut up your, you know, listen to the teacher, you don't know, like, et cetera. Um, so part of the healing journey itself is speaking our truth. Um, simultaneously, people who are, you know, speaking their wounds very loudly, you know, <laughs> healing might be to slow down and be silent and listen and deeply listen, which is the other part where meetings become medicine is if we are really deeply focusing on who's speaking when they are and really healing them, that itself, that connection with you connecting with another soul is that that other soul is really deeply sharing their truth and you're really hearing it, that process itself is healing. And it feels fantastic. And then our meetings can end with us feeling full of life, even if really difficult, sad things were shared, which is great. You know, crying is so freaking liberating. <laughs> you know, I'm coming from a culture where men aren't supposed to cry. And, you know, the few cries I've had in my life, are, ah, you know, I cherish them and I look forward to more. Um, so anyway, meetings as medicine, what does that actually look like? I'm going to do this in two minutes. The facilitator offers a healing offering. So this might be breath work, some meditation of sorts, some guided something, right? So this is the, you know, the facilitators opening up the space with some modality. Maybe they're singing poetry, whatever your gift of healing is, it could be anything, right? Um, then everyone goes in a circle and there's no talking back and forth and it is timed. So this is the structure to also keep it, you know, some orderly and some foundation is depending on how many people show up, um, you'll cut it out and say, okay, everyone gets three minutes to share whatever it is that you're healing. So the previous side is, are you healing your family, yourself, whatever it is, like whatever you're going through, if you just learned something, like I just learned something about the gut biome that blew my mind, I want to come share that, right? Um, this is where you have a space to come share that and to witness it and to really connect like I was just sharing. Uh, the one after that is gratitude share. So this is when we start operating as an ecosystem again and an economy. So this is where you could be, hey, I want to, you know, celebrate Natalie for holding the space today and for showing up in this capacity. I think that's fantastic. You know, I love Natalie for doing that. I want to I want to share that gratitude so we can celebrate what people are accomplishing and what we're doing as a movement. Um, I went out there and planted a garden. I went and, you know, brought, brought beavers back to this bioregion. Whatever it is you did to help serve the Renaissance, too, let's also share these things and celebrate that together. So this is when we go around in a gratitude share. Same structure, you share what it is you want to share. There's no back and forth, then you go on, right? Uh, where people get to respond to that gratitude share is actually sending gratitude and seeds. So this is part of our economy where we have a token system where you can send gratitude and be like, I love Natalie for doing that. I love that you brought beavers back to our bioregion. Then you can go into the DAO and soon into our wallet, hopefully, and write a beautiful message and say, thank you, Natalie, so much for doing these things. Uh, I love you so much for holding the space today. Thank you. Click send. And then that actually sends gratitude to Natalie. And then at the end of the cycle, she's going to get seeds. So this is how we're going to start distributing seeds in our economy again, is through celebrating each other for doing beautiful things for our movement. <laughs> All right, so then, then the main point is to unite with our tribes, like I was speaking to before, heal, you know, co-create, which is what the gratitude share is, and celebrate as we heal together and build our renaissance and create a new, more beautiful world our hearts know as possible. And we're almost done. Did I get it all, Natalie? <laughs> oh, yeah. And join the gratitude DAO and look at the